Hello my fellow gnomes and welcome back to another video and this is an exciting one because we're going to be doing something pretty cool today we're going to be making an entire game in the course of this video and we're going to be using a special new technique using AI to help us we've got a special new coding technique and it's going to help us make a game really quickly so I'm going to go straight into the workspace and add in a script because I'm excited to show you guys this now normally I say to people uh, make sure you've learned scripting so that you know what you're doing. But for this, you don't need to. You can just copy along uh, blindly and you can still get a really good result. So uh, I'll just explain what I'm doing anyway, but you can just go ahead and copy it and it will all make sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm create a variable called local code. And I'm just going to set that equal to the script. So I find that a lot of these names can be quite difficult to remember, a lot of these keywords. So I like to create my own custom names for them. I just find it makes it that little bit easier. So local env environment uh, equals the workspace. It makes a lot more sense. And local area equals the game as well. It just stops me getting confused later on. Uh, and then for different function names, different things in the game, um, I'm going to give them some new names as well. So local find equals... Uh, find first child uh, and then we're going to have local BP that's of course an acronym for the base plate no one wants to type all of that out and then we'll have local parent initially that's going to be set to nil um, but then we'll go ahead and we'll create a child that's going to be equal to parent and then of course we have a local sibling equal to parent right so if we've got all these variables set up then we'll just check everything is as it should be. So we'll use an if statement and we'll check uh, if we still have code. Because with this technique, uh, sometimes the the code, the AI doesn't want to generate the code for us. So we just check, have we generated that code? Yes, we have. And if we have an area to put the code in as well. That's very important. Now, it's possible that these won't work. So we'll make sure to have an else statement. So we'll say else, if we've got no area, then we'll warn know where to put our code sad smiley face and uh, if we've not got any code uh, then of course we have to do the the warn and we'll say we've been disconnected uh, from the mainframe okay so if we've got the code and we've got the area then the next thing we need to check is if we've got the environment so if we have the environment uh, then and again we probably want to do uh, a check on that so else if we haven't got that then we'll error out uh no game oh dear oh dear but if we have an environment then we can really get started with our coding so here is the interesting bit where we create our algorithm now we could use uh, a lot of different complex things and companies like google really invest a lot of money into their ai um, but for our sakes we can use a nice simple cheap option so we're just going to go with math.random that's going to be good enough for us. Uh, and then we're going to need an alphabet as well because, you know, we're creating this complex AI here, but it doesn't actually have an understanding of the English language. So we've got to teach it. So we're going to create a array and we're going to have every single letter of the alphabet in here. Now, we're going to type this all out by hand. Now, if you can't remember, you might find it helps to sing a little bit of a, bit of a song. So I'll go... A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And our next line. H, I, J, K, L, M, N. O, P, Q, R, S, T, U. V, W, X, Y, Z. There we go. Now, it's really important that you do type them out by hand. And I recommend putting them in a little formation so you can remember the correct order and the song as that will help it go that little bit smoother. Now, the next thing you're going to need to do is have some game ideas. So I'm going to have another little table here, game ideas. And I'm going to chuck in a few original ideas I can come up with. Uh, and then the AI is going to sort of develop off those. So let's have a think. We could have a, a simulator. Um, you could have a obby. You could have a role play and then a few little crazy ideas of my own. I'm going to throw in a piggy and maybe a tower defense. I don't know if anyone's done these before, um, but it could be interesting. Maybe something involving doors as well. Who knows? 
So they're all some interesting ideas. Uh, and then we're going to create a input for our AI. Originally, it's going to be an empty array. Uh, and then we're going to say while true do. While true, while it's all nice and sunny, keep it positive. We're going to check if we have our algorithm. Then we want to do stuff because if we don't, then we'll warn that our algorithm has gone to sleep. Sad face. But if we've got our algorithm, now that is really where we can start to do our logic. So local logic will equal, and we can use our algorithm now, and then we'll give it the entire contents of the alphabet. So this is where it's going to get interesting. And if we have got logic, we need to check that we have got still got some logic here. Because uh, if we haven't got any logic anymore, then we really need to warn the user there's uh, no logic in this code at all. But assuming that there is still some logic, then we're going to insert into our really important table. So into the input table, we'll import the alphabet uh, and the logic contained within it. And then we're going to check if we have input one and input two and input number three. So all of those inputs. Uh, then we're gonna we're gonna break out of this loop, break out this little bit of logic, uh, and so then we're gonna come all the way down here, and then we're gonna check if we have that input, which hopefully we still do. Uh, then we're gonna say the input, and we need to give it a child. So input equals child. Uh, the environment, of course, BP brackets brackets sibling equals parent. So hopefully you're still following me. All makes a lot of sense. And then we'll uh, print out that input for good measure as well. So there we go. Some beautiful code. Uh, let's go ahead and run it and see what this AI has generated for us using this crazy alphabet, using all these crazy ideas. Hopefully we can make a lot of Robux. Let's give this game a run and we run it. Uh, oh, we've deleted our base plate and we've got nil in the output. Happy April Fools. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.